What next for Renault's Formula One program? They're spending an inordinate amount of money to go nowhere fast, really. On the cover of this month's F1 racing, we bill it as the billion dollar gamble and ask what are the consequences if it fails? I'm joined by Ed Straw and Stuart Codling to discuss all things Renault. Stuart, you wrote this month's cover feature, a very rigorous analysis of the Renault F1 programme and where it stands. So tell us your workings out. How did you arrive at the billion dollar figure and why is that not enough for Renault to win in Formula One? It's like that countdown moment in the maths round, isn't it, where they have to show their workings out in a piece of paper. That's basically where they've got to. And the problem they've faced is that there's been historic underinvestment in the Renault F1 programme since the mid-2000s. So we look back to 2007 and the dawn of the homologated engine era. Flavio Briatore wanted to shut Viri Chatty on the engine facility down. As it happens, he just slashed the workforce there. That left them weak for many years after. It caused them to be behind with the initial KERS programme. It caused them to be behind with the hybrid power unit programme. And also they then sold their Formula One team to an investment company that underinvested in it. So the problem they faced for the past five years really is that they've had to spend money on their program that someone else hadn't been doing for about 12 years. And Ed, we know that Renault have had difficulties since reacquiring the Enstone operation in terms of getting it back on track to be like a proper modern Formula One team. 2019, they should be progressing much further out of the midfield. What have been the weaknesses this year? Because it seems that they've been underperforming as well on top of having the structural problems that uh, Codders mentions in his piece. Well, the problems are multifold. The car, its pure underlying pace is OK. It's, it's good enough to be, to be best of the rest in fourth, but they're very, very bad at getting the maximum out of it. We saw in the Hungarian Grand Prix before the start of the, of the August break, they had a Q3 car. Neither driver made it to, to Q3. One of them fell in Q1 it's just not really good enough when you've got that pace you need to at least maximize it and they're they're well behind mclaren in the battle for fourth and they're not even in fifth place thanks to toro rosso picking up a hatful of points in the german grand prix before the before the break as well so the, the car ultimately it doesn't have the aero load that it needs to have the car isn't great in the turn and entry phase and under braking so that was something that daniel ricardo really had to adapt to having been used to it uh, with with red bull and Basically, just the whole thing isn't quite cohering. They've invested heavily, loads of new recruits, good people, facilities, everything at Enstone, but they need to be a clear fourth. And they're not even fourth at the moment, they're sixth and being beaten by the customer team, McLaren. So this is the first time this Renault project has really started to look well behind the curve of where it needs to be. Up to now, it's been fine. This is a concern, and there will be concerns and ructions within the team about the fact that things aren't quite coming together as they should. Renault obviously have made bold claims about aiming to bridge the gap from the midfield to the top three teams, never mind win the midfield battle, and they're not achieving those aims. And structurally, it looks like even with the budget cap coming for 2021, that won't mitigate the fact they haven't been able to invest at the same rate as the top teams. So what does this say about Formula One and the viability of the future Renault F1 programme? It's tricky, isn't it? I think, once again, it goes back to the turn of the decade when Renault stepped away they would have had a position of power and influence, which the the likes of Mercedes, Red Bull, the, the, the Grand E teams, the Constructors' Championship bonus group now have because they were able to play hardball with Bernie Eccleston at a time when he wanted to tie the manufacturers in so that he could you know, organise the sale of, of, of Formula One as a sport. Those people now have a disproportionate amount of influence and Renault is basically outside the tent trying to get in and, and that is what makes it tricky for them because Renault can't get in because they don't want them in. Well, Ed, Cyril Abitable, the team principal, mentions that they've underinvested in the team even while spending all this money compared to Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull. So how do you look at the, the, the curve there? Would you be worried if you were a member of the Renault board that you're simply wasting this money and it might be time to pull the plug entirely? Uh, you would be thinking about it because this was promised to be a team that could do what Mercedes or Ferrari is doing, but on something like 15% less less of the, the budget and the investment. And unfortunately, even though they spent a huge sum of money, it's still not the same level that Mercedes are in. Mercedes, of course, some years ago had to make the decision whether they'd increase their investment or just accept that they're going to be fourth, third consistently. And that's a question that Renault might have to, to ask themselves. And in terms of investment, money doesn't buy you success, but it defines your potential. And if they get 100% out of what they've got, 
they're never going to beat Mercedes if Mercedes are getting 100% out of what they've got. So that's the question. Renault might need to say, do we want to throw more money in and just ramp it up and make sure we're getting the most out of it and we can win? Or do we want to kind of try and keep doing it slightly on the cheap? And the fact that things aren't going well, and they've certainly got the resources to be a clear fourth, no question about that, they should be, that will be raising some concerns because right now Renault is not getting the maximum out of its potential. They thought that they would be able to be competitive by spending 15% less than Mercedes was spending. The trouble is that they pegged that to what Mercedes was spending in 2014, 2015. And since then, Mercedes have been incredibly successful, absolutely raked in the prize fund, so they can afford to throw money at the project and stay in front, whereas Renault have had to plough money in. They've only, the, the team has only just turned a, a profit this year after years of making a loss. And with the uh, budget cap coming, if it does come in, you have this problem where beyond a certain point you won't be able to invest in certain facilities. Mercedes won't have to because they have all those extra facilities. And we'll be spending more money now as well. Yeah, all these teams are now, you, you look at Racing Point who are frantically pouring concrete to, to build new facilities before the, the budget cap comes in. Everyone who's serious about being competitive post-2021 is spending now rather because they know they won't be able to spend later. Cheers, Codders. And if you want to read more on our Renault story, pick up a copy of this month's F1 Racing.